My name is Dulce Valencia and welcome to Telenovelas con Dulce, a podcast where every week I invite special guests to break down the telenovelas we love. From the music to the cast to the unforgettable plot twist. Every slap, every imbecile, every secret twin. I have got you covered. Bienvenidos and welcome to another episode of Telenovelas con Dulce. My name is Dulce Valencia. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm laughing because I'm, I'm so, she is struggling on the mic, so send her lots of love sorry. because she is doing I'm not a something. professional. She is stepping out of her comfort zone. Where was I? Bienvenidos and welcome to another episode of Telenovelas con Dulce. I am your host, Dulce Valencia, a local telenovela lover and wannabe TikTok star. TikTok listeners, welcome. I love you all. Comment. I don't know. <laughs> Today, we are back to talking about La Hembra Mala, Teresa. And joining me again for her second week in a row, we love to see it, is my dear friend, Aranza Marmolejo Ramirez. Y'all didn't get rid of me yet. Thank you, Aranza, so much for being here. Thank you for having me. And as is normal, tell me, what is the update on the constellations and stars? Ooh, well, I don't know what we are on right now, but mm -hmm. I definitely feel a more calmness after like the whole airy. Air I mean, we're still in airy season, but we're, we're heading to the end of airy season and on the 26th of april we're having a full pink moon so we're excited we're gonna plan a trip and what are you supposed to do for the full pink moon don't ask me that i don't know <laughs> i i get all my astrological advice i haven't really from you. looked into it i was gonna look into it when we went okay by next week we will know hopefully because i know for like full moons you're supposed to like make sure your house is clean so by the new moon oh, like i need to clean my like, apartment good then. start yeah <laughs> okay yeah <laughs> it's not i just looked at my apartment it's not even that bad it's, it's not bad it was a little better but then i was struggling on finding where we could record because we have this crazy wind my upstairs neighbors are super loud so i was like well we can record record in my room but i don't have a table in my room so we were gonna move my table and it just didn't work and now it's just a mess and now this is not gonna get her deposit back on this apartment because we scratched the fruit. i mean unless our landlord's listening then you didn't hear anything they don't god like must be just in nada okay <laughs> Anyway, we are back to talking about La Hembra Mala Teresa for this episode. If you are watching along, I know a few of you have messaged me and said it, that you are watching along with Teresa. We are only going up until episode 23. Very odd number, but... <laughs> it's a very odd number, but the reason is we were going to go up to 30. But then what happened? What happened, Dulce? Tell them. There's a telenovela Which called... Which we will not reveal, because isn't it supposed to be no, a surprise? No, 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 yes, okay. It's supposed to be yes, a surprise. Yes, 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 yes. So there's this telenovela that... I had wanted to see because I saw the ending a few years ago and it completely blew me away. Which classic Dulce, I don't know if you guys know this about Dulce, but Dulce spoils everything for herself. Like we'll go watch a movie and she already knows the plot and the ending. It's my toxic Is that not trait. psychotic? We yeah. still love her though. Yeah, and Aranza told me last week that she was going to reveal this or that we were going to try to reveal this toxic trait of mine on the mic. So yes, I like to spoil. Exposed. Um, I like to spoil stuff for myself because I I want to know. I want to know the ending. And maybe this is why I like the telenovela so much because I know how it's going to end unless we're watching the telenovela that we're watching right now. And I can't, re I can't spoil it because we are going to do... Uh, we're going to... We're going to do podcast recordings for it. And I'm so excited. Starting next week. Starting next week. You all will but probably yeah, not hear it until for another month. A, a, yeah, for another month, month and a half. But stay tuned for that telenovela because it is a trip. So I got Aranza, Kim, y'all know Kim, and Kevin. Kevin is Aranza's boyfriend and we love him. We're hooked. We love him. We're He's hooked. a Pisces. He's a Pisces. <laughs> He's great. I We genuinely love Kevin. Yeah. Like, Kim and I have talked about it. He's he's our friend, too. He's not Aranza's boyfriend. He's our friend, Kevin. And so, um, Kevin, if you're listening, shout out to you. So we're all hooked on this telenovela. We have watched it together a few times, and we're, like, each trying to catch up with each other. And we're recording next week, so I won't reveal the name of this telenovela. But basically, long story short, that is the whole reason that we only got to episode 23 of Teresa. Which I wanted to say something real quick. Dulce is that way, and she spoils her the endings for herself and I'm the exact opposite like I'm the type to start watching something and 
if I accidentally ruin something for myself, I will not watch it anymore. Or if I kind of know where it's going, I will stop watching it if I don't like the ending. Like, I just, oh my God. I can't. Like, I hate that. Oh, my God. Yeah. So right now, okay, I won't say anything. I won't say anything because it'll, okay. <laughs> We're like, can't say this. I can't say it. I have to save it. I feel like those YouTubers that are like, I can't reveal my project right now, but like guys later. Are so excited. excited. Um, we're gonna find out very soon. So I just can't keep wait to up. share it with follow you. Follow us on Instagram. Follow me on TikTok. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. Even though I don't use Twitter or Facebook that much, <laughs> but um, yeah, stay tuned for that telenovela because it's gonna be a wild ride, and I'm so excited because we're all trying to figure out something together yeah so you all are gonna get to hear us being detectives and now let's get started on teresa when we last left off we were introduced to the hembra mala teresa chavez a young and poor and beautiful student mm -hmm. who has just graduated high school tricked everyone around her into believing she was rich when in reality she is poor and is from la vecindad her professor arturo de la barrera offers to pay her university her university college costs in exchange for her working for him and teresa happily accepts no one is happy with this arrangement back home her parents well specifically her mom hates this arrangement mariano her on and off boyfriend hates it too and it's a mess we also end with the death of rosita teresa's little sister and this death is a it, pivotal moment yeah it impulses teresa forward and she's she blames rosita's death on money and after that she swears that she will never ever allow money to make her cry like this again and so that is where we left off last episode so Aranza, let's talk let's talk so since i feel like since we didn't really get that far i feel like i i like that because we can break down more of these like important characters mm -hmm. and talk more about that because since it's we're still in the beginning it's very telling of how they're going to act in the future mm -hmm. so it's like setting us up for that do I is there you, do, yeah, do yeah I tell, tell me tell okay me. so uh, what i wrote down on my notes is we just have like dulce said a lot of chisme specifically with luisa and i also wanted to talk about doña refugio because as i was watching the sped up versions on youtube i would look at the comments because I, i just you know comments yeah, are same, fun to look at same. and everyone was kind of hating on her i was hating on her too which i caught myself hating too but yes. i'm like Are they doing that on purpose? Because, like, I get where she... Okay, yeah. So those are the things I wanted to talk about. So okay, where so where I'll, set, I'll set you up there. So the whole reason, and correct me if I'm wrong, but basically um, when Rosita dies, summer starts. So we are entering summer vacation for them, which I think maybe Mexico does it a little bit different. I'm not 100% sure, but it might not be. But summer vacation, like, no one has school right now. And so this is a time where Teresa starts working for Arturo, el profe. So she's working for him, wearing all her seductive outfits, and she is just a mastermind. And so as she works for him, uh, she befriends Luis. Luisa. Luisa. I'm gonna stop you there. I okay. have something to say already. Okay, tell about me. how she wears seductive outfits. I mean, I would have to disagree. <gasps> tell um, me. Because especially back then, it isn't until very recently, I feel, that since women are like being in positions of like leadership and you know more powerful positions, women are able to dress there's more options on how to dress professionally mm. and especially back then there wasn't very much outfits that were like flattering to the women like we don't want to wear like these boxy suits that'll make us especially when you're okay. a woman shaped like teresa like i would want to okay. show that off too okay. okay like do you do we want her to be dressed and like hide everything like okay let's okay sorry continue no no no, no no you, you go you go okay i'm specifically thinking of the white shirt she wears with the with a blue skirt oh well yeah that whole that, tell me that okay, is not okay. that's a whole moment she wears a strapless shirt that's once. a whole moment okay yeah and we'll get to that moment but i i think she dresses a little more seductively like i'm not even talking about how tight her 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 clothes is mm -hmm. or anything it's just she's revealing her best features yeah I, on and purpose. i get that yeah and again everything and about reason everything about teresa is very calculated, calculated. Uh, okay <laughs> so yes yeah, so teresa starts working for el profe and she also as we um we forgot to mention she is back together with mariano at this point so they're together 
And she starts working for El Profe, which irks Mariano. Ugh, he's, it's, it's todo un oso, Mariano. It's oso. Like, hace tanto, tantas cosas que me da mm. tanta pena ajena. Pinche escándalo. Puro escándalo ese Mariano. Like, mm. Mm. Yeah, like, is that toxic mas masculinity? I highest? think so. Yeah. I think so, for sure. There is many moments where he drags Teresa away, where he's like, you are not going to go work for him. Like, we know what he wants from you. And it's it's this whole thing. And he always goes to El Profe's house and causes a scene. But anyway, so... At work, Teresa befriends Luisa. And we mentioned it in the first episode, but Luisa dresses very conservatively, very much with the attire, as Aranza mentioned, mm -hmm. that was available and common for working women to wear, which is just box. It's like a mold of office wear. It does not yeah. flatter her at all. And Luisa didn't like Teresa at first, but our Teresa isn't going to let that slide. Mm -hmm. So she befriends the heck out of her. Yeah, she really charms her. And I love Luisa. Too. Like, uh, like just like Aurora, they're both very like genuine characters, mm -hmm. and yeah, she charms her, and I really like their friendship. It's just like it's hard to watch Teresa and see her interact with these nice people, characters, whatever you want to call them, um, and knowing her true intentions behind it because they're not pure. Like, yeah, yeah, we'll get into it later. Yeah. So in the process of befriending Luisa, she also gives Luisa a makeover, and now Luisa is dressing more flattering. Her more curls. Young. Her curls. Her are my curls? favorite. She's like hair goals, like the curly hair journey goals. Yes, we love her curls. And in befriending Luisa, Teresa is able to access very important information from El Profesor Arturo de la Barrera. Among them is that his, his and Luisa's parents died. Well, they didn't die. They were killed. Murdered. They Murdered. blood in their, like, one of their rooms in their house. There's... Yeah, there's there's this really dramatic flashback. Before we, but are we before we even get into that, like the whole setup for that conversation was just so sudden and abrupt and out of nowhere. Like like we just see them pan to Teresa and Luisa and then all of a sudden just Luisa starts spilling her guts. Maybe she's a Scorpio. I think Luisa needed a friend. She I mean, for sure. Like of course. That's why like I love that for her, Teresa is like kind of what she needs. Mm-hmm. But again, knowing Teresa's true intentions, it's it's kind of like ugly to see that play out. But yeah, she just starts spilling her guts and like literally mentions like, oh yeah, like my parents died and and Arturo went through this with his ex and like everything. And it's like, it feels like it's coming out of nowhere, but it's like, yeah, like she's getting it all off her chest. Because this is the first friend Luisa has had ever. So among this tea session we get the reveal that arturo and luisa's parents were murdered and that luisa was 11 when this happened arturo was 24 and he was about to marry a woman named paloma, paloma. so yes so paloma is a woman that arturo was in love with they and dated all throughout prepa and la universidad no i think just university i think they were solid yeah. they were very much in love and and she leaves him at the altar and This is all because of what went down with his parents, which mm -hmm. hurts even more because it sounded like the whole networking, of course, when you're at that scale of like lawyer and like law, mm -hmm. it really affects your image. And that's why she split with him because she didn't want that to stain her image yeah, and so, her reputation. So she comes from a very nice family, very wealthy family, and they were basically like, you need to leave him. You need to leave him. Her and dad is, specifically. Yeah, this is tarnishing our family. This is going to tarnish our reputation. And so they whisk her away to Europe and she... And she leaves Arturo. And this isn't like one of those toxic exes that like you keep in touch. Some, oh you know, gosh. some people say like, all right, I'm never talking to you or speaking to you ever again. And this was actually the case with Arturo and Paloma. Like they legit, legitimately never, never talk talked again. again for, and I don't know how many years we can like estimate like a long time. Because Luisa was 11 and now she's at least 19. Luisa? Yes. I thought she was... No, she's older. No, because she's only like... Because when, when she meets Teresa, she makes a comment about how she's basically like her age or something. Mm -hmm. And Arturo is oh, like, oh, yeah. she's actually like a little younger than you. Yeah. But then in one of the episodes, Teresa was telling Arturo like, oh, like you, you should... Like dress, I think like differently, like you're for your young. age. Like you're, you're not that much. Like, he's, she said 
you're not that much older than Louisa. But I think what she was doing... She was just trying to like... Yeah, you didn't know what she was doing. But that's not tricked me. I was going to say, we'll we'll go back to what we were talking about, but there's so many moments where Teresa tricks me. And I generally don't know. You're you're caught in her like... In her web of lies lies that she wants you to believe. Because she's that powerful. the only reason that I sometimes like catch myself is the music. The music and because we've seen this before, (laughs) Louisa. And she's still close. Yes. Okay. So okay. So back to it. So yes, Arturo was gonna marry Paloma, and it it really hurts. And he got into an alcohol problem when Paloma left him. Yeah. So this is all information that Teresa is gonna keep in her back pocket because then what happens? Then Paloma returns into Arturo's life and is like looking for him. And every time we see her, she's crying and she's like, quiero hablar con Arturo. Mm -hmm. Like, solo quiero disculparme. Solo quiero hablar con él una vez más. Yeah, and again, his alcohol problems are stemmed from Paloma. Mm -hmm. So, obviously... uh, Toxic masculinity right there. Yeah. Like, a woman does not give you illness mm-hmm. no yeah i don't yeah i don't know anyone who's like goes off the edge off like one person but actually no no it's a thing i feel like it's like but it's not just that i feel like it's more of a combination yeah of but it's they presented it woman. as like oh it's bad no, no yeah but it's sure because in ruby they do this yeah. all the time with you're right, you're right. Ruli's character also. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, Paloma comes back and she's trying to meet with Arturo. And Teresa is like, she's weighing her options. Because right now she's back together with Mariano. She loves Mariano. But in secret. In secret, because she does not tell El Profe this. And she has this scale in her room. This justice scale. And there's a scene where she puts something Mariano gave her. A necklace, I believe, or a bracelet. Some piece of jewelry. Mm -hmm. And she's like, Mariano, Mariano, Mariano. And she puts it on one side of the scale. And then she pulls out her cell phone that El Profesor Arturo gave her. And he's like, and she's like, but I have to keep my options open. And she drops the phone. And that weighs more. And of course, the the scales of this justice thing. I didn't even know. That's so symbolic. It's so symbolic. And that's why I'm bringing it up. Because the scales tip in favor of the item El Profesor gave her. It's already alluding to what's going to happen. And so so Luisa and Teresa decide they're not going to let Arturo see Paloma. So then Teresa, uh, because Paloma calls into the office and because Teresa works there, she answers and she sets a, a meeting with Paloma. And so her and Luisa go, but it's just Teresa that talks to Paloma. And she tells her to stay away from El Profe Arturo. Well, she just calls him Arturo because he has forgotten her. And he is now very happy with her because they are together. And not only that, she's pregnant with her baby or his baby. And then at that, Paloma's like pregnant with his child. You're going to give him a child? Because we know in Mexican culture, like that's the number one thing any woman can do. Yeah, especially with like, because they, they show a lot of the Catholic. Yeah. Catholic belief systems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like, I feel like at that point, I feel like from the beginning of that conversation, Paloma, when she was speaking with Teresa, was kind of like dismissive about her almost because it's like she was there ultimately to talk to Arturo. She didn't get that. And she still felt like there was like some reconciliation. 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 I can't say it. (laughs) And then after Teresa tells her that, it's like, oof. And she kind of backs off and just runs away. Yeah. And then so Luis is like, what did you do? What did you tell her? And Teresa's not going to reveal what she said, obviously. Obviously. So she then, not only does she not reveal it, but she tells Luisa that she should tell Arturo that it was Luisa that spoke with Paloma and not her. Mm Mm-hmm. Porque le conviene. Uh-huh. Porque anda de mentirosa. And she doesn't know what how Arturo is going to react. That right. way it doesn't fall on her. Mm-hmm. And yeah, like it's a... In reality, like this is already crossing the line. So That's also what I was thinking line. about when I was watching these episodes is from the beginning, like her mom specifically and Mariano caused so many problems. Like if I was Arturo, like giving this student, like I wouldn't want those problems. Like because right off the bat, they were like questioning my judgment. And it's like... Like, girl, I'm paying for your daughter's tuition and giving her all these opportunities. Mm-hmm. So, like, the fact that he was able to, like, deal with all of that and still, like, be him. And by be him, I mean, like, all that. 
hunkiness and <laughs> he still was really respectful but it, like you know the boundaries are blurred so, <laughs> so much blurred. so much Ooh, i i tell me i forgot to stop you because we're we're all like <gasps> but um i had written down when he talks to teresa about Paloma, she's kind of like, oh my god, like kind of insinuating, like I would never do that to right. you. Like, why would someone do that to you? You're so, and then she always catches herself, mm-hmm. but like on on purpose. On purpose. You can tell it's on purpose. Yes. But I wrote down. She said, "Quien ama tiene que dar un apoyo incondicional." Because you know, Paloma, Paloma left, left him. him also because she didn't want to be Luisa's mother. But the reason why I wrote that one down is because like she wouldn't know shit about that. Her hypocrite ass. Like then she would have stayed with Mariano. Mariano. So it's like very like she's feeding you what like you oh like the hear. canción like. Jurándote tanto amor, pero eso todo es mentira. Solo es parte de su engaño. Y cuando ya te ha acabado, otro será el que reciba las mismas muestras Muestra de amor. Muestras de amor. Yeah, that's remember remember that as we move forward with Teresa, because oh my God, I've been kind of spoiling bits and pieces for myself because I know how it ends, but I also like don't remember everything that happens to get there. Yeah, me either. And like I, I had forgotten was, that her his her little sister died, and just like she did, because like, I remember when I was talking to her last week about the episode, I was like, oh, just watch until Rosita dies, and I was like, who? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Sorry, Rosita. Rosita. <laughs> so yeah, Teresa to every single person around her, she's lying, and it's gonna be more important as we move forward with this chunk of episodes because it all culminates, and she's lying to like five different people. Yeah, at and once. it's like, how do you even, how do you remember all those lies? Yeah, how do you keep up? with this like all these secrets and still again she's very calculated so she's she's smart that's how she does it it's she's chess. smart because like we're so envenenados con su belleza that like we forget that yeah she has the brains too mm-hmm. like what she tells aida when oh my god can we talk about aida and what she does to teresa some more so class finally starts well hold up before we get there though i want to talk about refugio oh and yes scandalo que causa. oh yes okay i'm like what happened first <laughs> okay so basically all right so refugio calls causes a scandal and it's all tied to Paloma because Arturo and Teresa and oh, Luisa yeah. run into Paloma at this event and then Arturo is very shaken up by this. Because this is the first time that he actually sees her. Exactly. And so then Teresa, he drives Teresa home and then Teresa and him are oh, outside we also have, we forgot, car. We forgot to mention this is after the fact that he knew that Teresa and Luisa kind of like wanted to take care of Yes. Aloma for him. Yes. So he knows that they talked to her, but he doesn't know what Teresa said yet. And so they're standing outside of his car, and then Teresa notices that his that his hands are shaking. Which I found this actually very cute if she wasn't so yeah. manipulative. And she holds his hands. Because I think shaking. that was that might have been a genuine moment from her. It might be. Who knows? And we so don't know. we don't know because Teresa is so manipulative. But she holds his hands, and they're looking at each other. And then Arturo like excuses himself and kisses her hand and this whole interaction refugio teresa's mom saw and in her eyes she's like the way he looked at you like that is not acceptable so then she goes to la oficina and first thing she, in the morning before that it, like no one's there le reclama arturo she's like you're not gonna get away with this she's basically like arma un escándalo over nothing but as a mother okay and this is the part and we're the, going back to the comments where yeah. i find myself also hating it's like because i don't like her either i felt really bad though when she's like apologizing to teresa and, and like, teresa, teresa breaks a plate remember? teresa breaks a Doesn't plate she, no she yeah, does when she, she goes to talk to her so basically word gets to Teresa and she's so upset at her mom for causing the scene because Arturo starts treating her very distant very and not only that but Mariano finds out about this oh my god yes because while Teresa breaks the plate and is yelling at her mom the door is open and Mariano walks in so it's this whole convoluted mess and long story short Teresa Teresa lies to her mom because she goes to um so she goes to Arturo at this point Arturo has found out that Teresa told Paloma that she was pregnant with his kid but he doesn't correct her which I think is very important oh, yeah and so he finds out the truth and he knows that Teresa crossed the line so Teresa goes to him because she's trying she thinks her only problem is that her mom was like stay away from my daughter but then when Arturo confronts her about that 
she kind of like does the perfect thing and's like okay like you're right like we have crossed the lines and i'm i can't work here anymore and it's like obviously to him it's like he didn't say anything or fight for it because it's like yeah like that's messy yeah so then she she quits she writes him a note though she writes him a note before she leaves though and she mm -hmm. quits and she goes to her madrina's house and so then to um so she goes to her madrina's house and then she's like pero no me siguió madrina I like i may have actually lost my job yeah. he, i thought he was gonna run after me and he didn't and then her madrina is like helping her be like okay this is your next move and that's when she says todo con medida mija which translates to just make sure you're very calculated about this everything with so, measurement when i heard that i was like hmm because her madrina is like a second mother figure if not her favorite mother figure which kind of hurts to Definitely say her favorite. but yeah like does she learn it from her but also her madrina juana is not evil or manipulative yeah no but when you pass but maybe did she me. take things too yeah. far and then i said just also had the brains to carry everything out very calculating so yeah so then she quits her job and then goes to her madrina and her madrina is like you're gonna talk to the sister and you're gonna like have her advocate for you and then to her mom and mariano she's like i, I got lost fired everything i can't study at my yeah. dream school i can't yeah and then she also tells her dad that it was her mom's fault she tells luisa that her mom hates her because she she wishes that teresa would have died instead, instead of, rosita, of rosita which when she said that i was like that's low that's very low and meanwhile teresa's mom is apologizing and she's blaming herself and it's really hard that's when i started not hating her because yeah it was just like she's doing her best and she like as a mom she she like she messes up but also what i was reading from the people in the comments on the youtube videos was like he shouldn't really have to go over to their house and ask that it has parents permission for every little single thing that's true like the phone situation was blown out of proportion that was like, blown so out of proportion when he tries to buy her a phone originally he has to go and ask that it parents for permission and the mom's like no she can use a public phone she like no and it's like so dumb and it's even like when luisa later on brings up the fact that she's gonna get a new car and she wants to give teresa her old car and arturo automatically dismisses it because he already knows how teresa's parents are and that's just mm -hmm. gonna like cause and also another a car is much bigger than a phone so yeah yeah everything is blown out of proportion and teresa doesn't have a job anymore but it's her fault but she lies to every single person and then talks to luisa and is like um, I had to leave, but don't tell your, don't talk to your brother because I don't want you getting in the way. But obviously, she's saying this in the mind that she is gonna get in the way. Mm -hmm. But guess who gets in the way? Who who advocates for Teresa? Mariano. Mariano. And for the first time in this man's life, he's able to go to Arturo's house. We and didn't not... even we didn't even mention the fact that when um, Mariano oh storms off in his car to go reclamarle a um, Arturo the the ring in a mat the the box i'm like <laughs> a gift falls out of the car magically onto teresa's feet and she opens it and it's a ring and a note he was gonna propose or like a promise ring or something yeah he was gonna propose to her and is like this isn't the ring you deserve but it's a placeholder his plan is he's gonna get her yeah. the ring she wants but they break up instead but he goes to arturo's house and tells him do not fire her like give her a chance go after her and he even admits his feelings about teresa to arturo and tells him that teresa is not interested which is true now now but when teresa first told arturo that she wasn't interested they were very much dating yeah and again it's like everything kind of works for teresa like that like yeah because very easily like everything could come falling down but people kind of just say the right things for her and protect her and she has the right people on her side for now for now so yeah so then arturo go like sends a car for teresa and teresa goes to his house all excited and then arturo is like mariano came to talk to me and teresa's face falls because she's worried that mariano said the wrong thing but then she finds out that mariano was perfect and said everything perfectly which makes it harder for her because it's like she wants to hate him mm -hmm. and not pursue arturo so she gets her job back and everything's perfect and class is about to start and this is where we get the aida and teresa showdown and the steamy like professor student relationship but before we talk about that we are gonna take a short little break and we are back aranza we are entering the stage where summer is over 
and Teresa is going to school for the very first time to university. And you just said something that I found very truthful. And what was that? That Teresa is basically legally blonde. And it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> it really does, though, because Teresa is a girl that no one wants. She's going there. Her ex-boyfriend is with someone new who hates everything Teresa is. A.K.A. Aida, A.K.A. the Vivian of this story. And I think Paolo even dresses very similarly to very Warner. Preppy. Yeah. yeah. And he still very much likes Teresa. Oh, yeah. So class is in session. And Arturo is going to be Teresa's profe again. And oh, my God. So first day of class, Teresa walks into the hallway and immediately runs into Aida and Paolo. And Aida immediately starts bullying Teresa because she hates that Teresa's poor and that she's a hater. A, a fan and a hater all in <laughs> one. Like, I don't even, that's why I'm like, I took a screenshot of what she wrote, writes later, writes later on the board because it's like, girl. Like, how do you have that much free time to hate someone? Because she's rich. That's true. She's very rich. She spends her time at the country club playing tennis and being Paolo's, like, second choice. Oof, that hurts. <laughs> <laughs> so Teresa walks in and Aida immediately starts telling everyone, look at her. Like I went to La Prepa with her and she's poor and she's narrimada. And she basically starts insulting Teresa. And Teresa looks at everyone in the eye like the queen that she is. And she's like, mi nombre es Teresa Chavez. Apréndanselo porque no solo voy a ser la número uno, pero voy a ser la número uno de esta generación. Generación, by the way, means class. So <laughs> And the, Lewis is laughing because earlier I said that, like, I I basically said what Lisa said. And I said that, I don't even know, like, Aranza said that she was like, dang, and Teresa said it, you know, she meant like, she did <laughs> she said she didn't just mean class, she meant the whole generation. And then, and then she caught herself immediately. And she was, was like, like, wait, I think that means the same thing, but no. What I meant is, like, she's not going to be number one in just, like, that classroom. She's going to be number one in the university, the university like, of her graduating yeah. class. But either way, like, I, I'm done. Yeah. Next. <laughs> so class is in session, and Teresa makes her way to her next class. And as she's walking... Wait. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so I don't know how Teresa does it, because... Uh, I yeah I don't know how she does it like so many haters that like that just must feel so vulnerable and like I feel a lot of feelings when I watch those scenes and it's like when I get most worked up for her because I had a situation it's my friend no nothing like bullying like Aida but it's my freshman year going to college I'm busing it two hours to Nevada State, two hours back. I do my homework on there. Like, I'm also poor, but I'm on a scholarship like Teresa. <laughs> so very relatable. <laughs> but guys, like my first class, 8 a.m. class, Monday through Thursday. Wait, no way. I walk, <laughs> sorry, hold on. Okay. I walk into my first class and who do I see? <gasps> my ex. And not oh, only no. his ex, my ex, but my ex with his best friend who doesn't like me. And they're sitting right behind me and I know no one in the class, so I'm sitting by myself. And the whole time, like, I'm having, like, an anxiety attack. Like, I I was like, oh, I'm like even remembering, like, it's triggering me. I went to the counselor's office, like, the next day and dropped out of that class because I couldn't do it. So I don't, that's why I'm like, I don't know how she's doing it. Cause like, Aurora, we don't really see her by her side. Cause Aurora's in medicine, mm -hmm. she's in law. Mm -hmm. And it just so happens that her freaking nemesis and ex are in law too. Wow. And you dropped the class. Yeah. Hell, Monday through Thursday, 8 a.m. That's true. That was already because you would have had to wake like up at 5 in the morning. Like the pressure to like look good. Like I'm not going to like that's look true. like a mess in front of you my ex. Look like I have to stunt. But also the so that's why. Me. So that's also why I feel like Teresa has to stunt. She has to stunt on her she haters, on her to. ex, on she everyone. Has to. And she does. She's dressed very, she's dressed very pretty, very accentuating. Everything very hugs her just the right way mm -hmm. 
And yeah, and and for anyone who's going through a Teresa experience and is facing that imposter syndrome. You're that bitch. You are that bitch. Remember Teresa in this moment. Mm -hmm. She looks everyone, meets them in the eye because she's at the Universidad del Sur, which is where all the rich kids go. And she knows that she deserves to be there because yes, she's she is smart. beautiful, mm -hmm. but she is the smartest one in that class. And she is going to prove it because in lesson number one, El profesor Arturo asks, well, before that though, Ooh, the steamy moment. <laughs> I'm like getting hot and red. So, as Teresa is making her way into the classroom, she's, she's there early because she's like, she has to get the perfect seat, the front row seat in the corner next to the profesor. She's like stalking her prey because as she walks, she sees him and he's talking to another student she's and like, she <laughs> smiles yeah. and she makes her way and she sits down. So, she sits down and she's like, hmm. What am I going to do to catch the professor's attention today? And this hoe, <laughs> she rides up this like teal blue skirt. So it's a knee high, knee length skirt. And she brings it all the way down looking like it's a mini skirt. Mm -hmm. In reality, I feel like, I don't know, because I'm not a man. So I don't like all oh, those legs, like, you know, but... I guess in this novella, when the Arturo, men are dogs. when Ar no, and like even before Arturo walks in, like her classmates are all over her, like yeah, and then it's like, like hello, hola, yeah, like she knows, she knows. So yeah, so then she crosses her legs, and then el profesor walks in, and she's like, hola, buenos días, and then he immediately notices, and so he looks, and then Teresa catches him looking. So then ella, oh my gosh, she's like, oh my god. And she rolls her skirt down. And then Anta will let you do this part. When Teresa rides her skirt down, she does like the hand thing that people do on TikTok. Like, like covering your, like over your forehead. I don't know, like, I don't know. If, like I'm going to take a picture of Aranza right now and post it on the, the... listeners don't know. I know, but I'm like, going to post it on the... She's like... <laughs> <laughs> All right. I took a picture of Aranza, so I'll be posting it on the Instagram on the Instagram. On the Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like that whole moment was like so steamy. Mm -hmm. Cause it's like he I feel like he kinda like gulps and it's like, oh my god, like he's like provoke she's provoking him and like seducing him from like afar and it's uh -huh. like it's so like it's just enough to like she's safe. And it's again that that blurred line of like relationship that they have. But that line is like invisible. Very soon. <laughs> like, there is no line. <laughs> Very soon. So, yeah. So, Teresa, um, Teresa, you know, she feigns, she feigns modesty. And then el profesor ends the class by asking this question, which I already forgot because it's something law-related. And he asks it. He, and he also said, like, you guys should have learned this in la prepa. Uh-huh. Because no one knows the answer. And that's when Teresa raises her hand. And that's when I think she really is a Sagittarius. Because I've done this in my classes. Of course. Because if y'all didn't know, I'm basically a nerd. Like, I got straight A's throughout college. Debate. I graduated cum laude. I was very much that nerd. And so... I was, like many times my professors wrote to me telling them I wrote the best essay they, they had ever read. Aww. And as a writer, that really like, like hit my ego. In fifth grade, <laughs> I actually won a writing report. And I think it's because I used the word eager, which I learned on <laughs> um, PBS. PBS Kids. PBS Kids was my thing. Between the Lions taught yeah, me everything. all about everything. Word Girl? Word Girl. She taught me I word learned eager. all my old Cap Captain Huggy yeah. things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cyber Chase taught me about fractions. Yeah. <laughs> PBS oh kids God. go, man. I didn't have Support cable. Support so. PBS. Yeah. For poor kids like us. We're, we're going to be dropping the donation link below. I'll put it in the show notes. <laughs> I actually will. So yeah, so then he asks this question and no one knows the answer, but Teresa does. So then she raises her hand, answers it correctly, perfectly. And Arturo is very much satisfied because if you remember, part of their deal was she was going to be the top student. And so Teresa is living up to her promise. And so he dismisses class, leaves, and then Aida immediately starts bullying her. They make fun of her old laptop, everything, because apparently Paolo gave it to her a couple of years ago. 
And they just start making fun of her and being like, you probably know the answer because you work for him and he probably told you. And, you know, you're probably like doing more than just working for him. And Teresa's like, no, like everything I, everything is right here. And she points to her brain because she's smart. And okay, this is the part, Aranza, where I'm going to open it up for a little debate. Because before we started recording, I told Aranza, I really wish that Teres we would have seen Teresa pursue a law career. And this is a minor spoiler so skip to like a few minutes down if you don't want to if you don't want it to be spoiled for you but I really wish that we would have seen what Teresa would have been like as a lawyer without being in a relationship with a certain someone because I feel like she really could have gone far and that's where like I agree but disagree I agree that she would have gone far but I don't think she would have gone as far as she did and the only reason i say that is because she was giving all the the like instruments to succeed and specifically because she's going to the best university like in the first few episodes we talked about how her mom was like you're gonna do just fine in like community college basically but see what i mean if i mean she would have still so in in my reality that i wish we would have seen is she still has el trato con arturo but it's strictly professional mm. and there's no blurred lines okay i thought you meant no, 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 like no, no, nothing no, no, no. at all like no. she wasn't gonna have those network no i 100 percent agree she would have been like the lawyer that so if they would have just really kept it strictly like professional and she she would have graduated top of her class and been a lawyer on her own terms. Oh yeah, then I agree with that because if she was working with him, then that's like that's already such a boost because of the network. Yeah, mm-hmm. and she's a good she's good at what she does. Like Arturo is mm-hmm. constantly that's impressed. That's a good point because yeah, like so I really wish we would have seen that, but then again we wouldn't have a telenovela. The whole love triangle story, yeah. And we wouldn't have because the whole Teresa is very similar to Ruby. The tragedy of Teresa is her ambition, and it's, it's her it's her downfall and it's her strength Mm -hmm. because i am a thousand percent supportive in people being ambitious i myself am very ambitious she's one of the most ambitious that i people that i know but it's not on the level of teresa it's not like if i was that pretty maybe (laughs) but and so that's i really wish that that story we could see it but then it would have been very much like a legally blonde and this isn't legally blonde no this is a novella this is a novella and so yes so then that that framework is set down that Aida is Aida is jealous and she's acting out and she's blaming Teresa having an illicit relationship with Arturo as the reason she's so smart. Where's the point where Aida rips her shirt? I'm getting there. Okay. So then after class, Arturo is like, Teresa, like, let's go have lunch together or like this. And she's like, no, like I have to go to El Notario, whatever Aida's father's name is, to his house to pick up the papers. And so she goes over there. And they don't show it in the sped up version, like their whole confrontation. But I went back and I watched the full episode, like just that scene so I could get some background. Because when when Teresa goes there, she runs into Aida. Of course. And then they get into an argument. And then Teresa is basically, basically insinuates to Aida that if she wants to, she can get together with Aida's dad. And she's like, and he's going to leave your mom. And you say that he loves your mom so much, but I know that this moment, he wants me. And I could get him with me at any second. Which is like the craziest card to play because it's literally like, <laughs> I'll fuck your dad. What does Billy Irish say? Like, what did she A say? Spike seduce your dad type. Spike seduce your dad type. That's literally... <laughs> Teresa, and it's, that's not even Teresa's like fault. It's her disgusting like father, cheating ass father. But Aida doesn't know this yet. I know, and she kind of Teresa always kind of kind of like just like what does she do? She like she sets up her little like a trap. Oh, like don't fuck with me, girl, because I got this coming for you, and it's mm-hmm. something you're never gonna expect. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's like Aida doesn't have a freaking clue of what that's gonna be. So it's like Teresa, and like that's why. That's what I feel keeps Teresa going because, again, she has all these inf- little information about these people that she yeah. knows she can play later on. And, yeah, she knows she has pe- shit against people. And she just keeps it all in her mind. Like, I would need a little journal yeah, where like, I plot everything and write everything yeah, down. Yeah, and she pulls them out, like, in the perfect times. And yeah. sometimes, you know. Like, for me, it would be, like, Promising Young Woman. You know how she writes down all her plans? Mm-hmm. Like, I would need that. But Teresa is just, like, all in the brain. Como dijo. Like, everything she needs is right up here in her brain. And so then the next day... Oh, so after that whole little spat with Aida, 
Teresa goes back to work. So Aida did rip her shirt, ac- like, not accidentally, but, like, I don't think she meant to actually rip it. But a little bit of the frill that Teresa has falls. And then Teresa goes to work, and she tears, tears, like, a part close to her, like, breast. And she just tears it up. And then she makes herself cry. She covers her chest and then goes to the profe and is like, I'm so sorry, I can't work for you today, like, in this condition. And then he's like, what's wrong with you? Like, what happened? And she's like, Aida, es que esto y otro. And basically, she lies to him and says, Aida, she bends the truth. Yeah. And says, Aida ripped my shirt, and it's this and this. And Arturo is like, esto, like, you can't continue letting her tear you down. Yeah. And the next day at school, Teresa walks into class, and there is a message written on the board. And Aranza took a screenshot, so she will be reading yes, the message. I laughed at this part because it it rhymes, so it's like a poem. And Haters are Dulce, fans. Yeah, Dulce and I were like, who has the time, man? Like this. Okay, so let me read it. She says, Que brillante es nuestra Teresa. Siempre consigue lo que quiere. Trae compu nueva. Recibe ayuda de alguien. Porque siempre sabe las respuestas. O lo que pregunta el profe Arturo de la Barrera. See, like, <laughs> what? Yeah, so that message is written on the board. And so Teresa walks in and sees it. Arturo walks in and sees it. And everyone's like laughing and giggling and making fun. And then Arturo is like, all right, someone wrote a message on the board and no one's owning up to it. So guess what we're going to have? It's a whole, he makes it a whole ass lesson in favor of Teresa. Like he kind of like gives Teresa the control of the room, which like powerful, powerful moment there. And it's like, yeah, Teresa this is has a trial. The, yeah, Teresa has the reins. It becomes a trial. Like, And Arturo sets it up too because he's yeah. like, he's like, all right, Teresa is the accused. So we need a defendant for the accused. And then Teresa, is like I can defend myself Period. and then he's like we need a prosecutor basically like a and he he's like her he's like I wonder who it could be Aida <laughs> <laughs> and then so Aida is like and she's like ¿Qué? <laughs> and, and yes. then we need a judge because um, Teresa is like usted también es un acusado so no puede ser el juez usted va a ser un testigo like you're gonna be a witness not mm-hmm. a judge so they make another one of the classmates i forget his name um but he's Paolo, part of the Paolo's not, friend. yeah paulo's friend he's part of like the rich kids and make fun of teresa yeah. and so he's the judge and then teresa sets her opening statement and she basically she lets aida have it and this is where teresa shines and we see that she's smart she's calculating she she's well spoken mm-hmm. So she's like, the statement on the board is accusing the professor and I of being in an illicit relationship. Number one, even if this claim were to be true, there's nothing in the law that prohibits such a relationship existing. But two, there's no evidence. There's no evidence. Like, where and are the receipts? Yeah, where are the receipts? Where are this and that? And she's like, this is not even a true claim. It doesn't even merit a trial because it's simply untrue. And she presents the evidence. Aida can't defend herself. And she brings up the whole like computadora stuff. And then Teresa's like, so I then if I can bring a receipt and show that it wasn't Papa El Profe, then I win. And so then Teresa's like trump card, Aida's notebook is right in front of her desk. So Teresa raises it up and says, oh, by the way, you use the same handwriting. Boom. And like, so it's like <laughs> mic drop because it's like, everyone's like, hee hee. Yeah, everyone's like, oh, yeah. and Aida is pissed. Yeah, she got served. And so she's like, she's like, wants to cry. And then Teresa is like satisfied and Arturo is proud. But be- even before that, she was kind of insinuating that Paolo, Paolo? Oh, Paolo? yeah. Paolo probably bought her the computer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like, she could have given her that information, but it's like, she didn't even have to. And it's she like, didn't want to, though, because she mm-hmm. also tells the profe that, that Aurora. <laughs> we're like, what's her name? We haven't Aurora. talked about her because yeah. we've been watching this fed up version, which is just the main couple and but out she lies and tells out um arturo that the computer is from aurora on a loan whatever because again teresa is keeping her cards close mm-hmm. so after tearing aida down she goes to the professor arturo who calls ruben aida's father and is like she accused me of this and this could have gotten me into a lot of trouble so you need to take control of your daughter and so then ruben yells at his daughter and aida much like teresa is also very much a daddy's girl 
So she's like, no, baby. Like, she's, like, upset. Teresa's winning on all, all fronts here. Mm -hmm. And then Teresa's like, no puedo trabajar por ustedes, profe. No quiero que algo malo le pase. Yeah. And she goes to cry to Luisa again. So uh -huh. Luisa on her side. And, and she's is like, trying to quit, which is, like, the fourth time she's tried to quit yeah. this job. And Teresa's like, maybe, like, we'll be, like, besties and we can hang out more now. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's such BS. It's manipulation. But, of course, Arturo's not going to have any of it. And then we cut we end the episode this is the end of episode 23 i believe luisa tells arturo like oh like te quedaste con las manos cruzadas like you didn't really win that mm -hmm. argument with them and he was like de verdad de verdad crees eso because yo creo que cuide las cosas and that's when it's revealed that he went to go talk to Aida's dad mm -hmm. so before that though he's having a conversation with Aida's dad or like after because the episode ends with a conversation between Arturo and Ruben mm -hmm. and Arturo knows about Ruben's mistress Esperanza Teresa's friend and he's like oh yeah I'm gonna go meet with her but you know if my wife asks I'm with you ha 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 and then Arturo is just complacent which I'm like that's also sus behavior and so they start talking about Paloma and they start talking about love and because I because Ruben is like I really like Esperanza like I thought when I met her she was gonna be a one night type thing but no like I really can't get away from her and then eso no te pasa a ti and then Arturo reveals that he's in love and it's not Paloma who he's in love with and then Ruben's like no será esa chica que trabaja para ti and Arturo's like I'm not gonna reveal who it is but then Teresa walks in so we know it's her so now el profesor Arturo is in love with our Teresa and the question is is Teresa falling for him or is she playing her cards with him let's find out next week join us again next week where we will continue breaking down Teresa our dear Aranza is gonna be back and hopefully we can watch more episodes even though we're addicted to another novela right now that shall not be named yes <laughs> thank you so much for listening to another episode of Telenovelas con Dulce if you like what you're listening to please leave us a review and stay tuned we're gonna be back with more teresa more telenovelas and more content see you soon bye tiktokers bye.